All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Big Time Hoops, the podcast. Jumping into uh, men's Division One basketball, you may men's basketball. Taylor Shildroth joining us on Big Time Hoops, the podcast. Taylor, first of all, did I say it right? Is it Shildroth? I've heard it pronounced differently. I got it. Was I close? Was it good? Yeah, you got it. Yeah. Well, what see- exactly? What, what What is a Shildroth? What, what is a Shildroth? It's a great question. A hooper, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Yeah, we don't we don't know we don't know the family history, the family meaning behind it. Like it's not not a common name. No, honestly, no, I have no clue. <laughs> what'd you, what'd I actually you? changed it. it uh because my mom, it's it's my stepdad's last name. Because my mom had me when she was younger. So I had like my grandparents' last name. And yeah. then when they got married, I changed it. So I like that. We'll just go Hooper. It's a Hooper. Yeah. We'll go yeah. with that. Yeah. So we were just talking about before we started recording here, classes are back in session, but just chill mode, right? Just getting classes done at the apartment, at the, at the room, whatever, and going to practice. And that's it right now. Yeah, for sure. It's pretty boring, but, you know, we're doing what we have to. Yeah. And you guys have had a little break basketball wise, too. You guys haven't played since what? Almost mid January, going on a month without games, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah I know. We've had some obviously some COVID stuff so we're still kind of waiting to see uh who's going to be available and what the season brings for the rest of the season if, if we get one but yeah so it's kind of all up in the air right now so what's the deal with you guys was it teams you were playing with that had COVID cases or was it within the Black Bear program itself um, yeah so like I think one of the teams we played like they might have had uh when we played Vermont there was some stuff I'm not really sure what went on but and then we got it right when we came back a couple people in the in the program but and then like we were supposed to play Binghamton I think Binghamton got it like when we were coming back yeah like, when we were supposed to come back so it's just a mess and we have guys hurt and stuff too so yeah we're kind of trying to figure out where we're gonna go from here but, what's it like just trying to stay into it I mean you, you talk about ups and downs like the season was delayed to begin with and then I think games were postponed and then you play a little bit and uh, back on a break. Like, How do you stay motivated throughout this and just continue to want to play? Like at some point, like it's probably human to just be like, all right, like I'm, I'm good for the year. I'm just going to yeah. take some time, regroup and come back next year. Yeah. I mean, we've had two, like two to three week breaks. I mean, in the last couple of months. So it, it is difficult, but I mean, I, I just, I like playing too. Like we've only at the same time, we've only got to play eight games. So it's like, I want to play games and stuff, you know? And, like, when we've been practicing all year. So, I guess that's the motivation, just being able to play games because that's obviously the most fun part. What do you guys do? Like, whenever you guys go, like, into, into a little break like this, do you guys still practice? Like, you allowed to even do anything? Or is it pretty much you get stuck just in your room quarantine? Yeah, stuck. Because technically, like, if someone in the program gets it, then we all have to isolate for 10 to 14. So, nothing. Then on top of that, like, how do you stay in shape? Like, even just uh, – Yeah. <laughs> the, the, basketball is a rhythm game. Like, it's all yeah. about rhythm, right? So, you take these two, three-week breaks. Like, how do you stay in rhythm? And then you, yeah. There's – you don't. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're not allowed to go anywhere. It's not like I can work out on my own. Like, yeah. can't leave. So, yeah. Whenever you guys actually get to practice, you guys just must be, like, just so happy to finally be there. But also just, like, you got all this built-up aggression. You guys just must go at each other in practice. Yeah. And then it, and then everyone gets tired real fast. But <laughs> Yeah, it's it's fun. Whenever we get back in there, it's just good to be able to see your teammates and your friends and stuff. So. Yeah, and that's the other thing yeah. too, just isolation, right? I mean, you guys are apart and you, yeah. you're taking classes remote, so you're not even like interacting with students. So it just sounds yeah. very lonely. Yeah, it's <laughs> it is, but you know, we're almost done with it. Yeah. So what, what, what's looking right now? When do you guys uh, have games lined up for sure? Like when was the next set of games for you guys? Uh, we, yeah, we don't know. Cause we were supposed to play Binghamton when we got back and they had a shutdown and the America East has been scheduling like two weeks at a time now yeah. because of that. So I, I'm not sure. Honestly. Right now. Don't, do not know right now. Yeah. No. And then the frustrating thing is too, is you get, you see the girls, like the girls uh, were got, yeah. got back to it. Right. So like they've gotten their games and they went to their little two week stretch where they had to shut it down. But it's got to be frustrating to see them do their thing and that you guys are just kind of on the sidelines. Just waiting. Yeah, no, I mean, at least someone's getting to play, though. And so, yeah. But it is frustrating when we're just kind of sitting here and all the other programs are practicing and playing. But Yeah. So, I mean, what, what, what are you doing for fun? I mean, you, you've had to have found something to do to freaking kill time around here with as much time as you're spending alone. Like, mm-hmm. what have you done during all this, like, you know, you, you just had a winter break, too. So, like, you didn't even have that. You didn't even have school to yeah. keep you busy for a little bit. It's like – pick up any hobbies like what are you doing to keep busy uh, uh a lot of 2k i won't lie a lot of 2k but other than that 
I mean, just to, luckily, I my English classes right now are killing me. So I've been reading a lot of books. So that's been keeping me busy. So I guess that is probably my second hobby, honestly, after after like 2K and stuff. But yeah, just keeping up with schoolwork. Um, I'm in a finance class. We talk about the stock market a lot. So I like to kind of keep up with that, do a little paper trading to practice. So that stuff's kind of fun. Interest me. But you got to find something to keep busy, right? You got to find something at least. But your your basketball journey, your basketball career hasn't always been what it's been this year, right? So it, it, it it's, it's been good in the past. But you've, you've been able to get through a full season in the past. Let's go back and find out how we got here. So are, are you a native of Blue Hill? Is it Blue Hill? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, born and raised all all through high school. Yeah, tell me about Blue Hill because I got a, I got a coworker who, who's from that area and he tells me about it and like I tell him I've never even heard of it. Is I, I can't even find it on the map. Like, where is Blue Hill? Um, I guess you probably like know where Ellsworth is. Yeah, yeah. So that's probably the closest point that you. It's like twenty minutes from there, down on the coast. Really small, a couple thousand people, a couple hundred kids in the high school. Um, it's a community it's not- high school. Where you guys got a bunch of schools or a bunch of towns that make up the school, right? So, yeah, we have a bunch of little towns. Some of those towns have like 60 kids in their yeah. school. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's small, but what was your int- so that's nice. What was your introduction to basketball down there? Because I know George Stevens has had a long, proud basketball tradition. Uh, so what was it for you? Like, what, what was your first introduction to, to George Stevens basketball? Um, actually, it was my uncle was on the state team in 2003, and my cousin was coaching it. Uh, Matt obviously because he coached us too so like we were I was always at those games when I was like one two three because when he was in high school and he was a senior when they won so I think like around that time and Max was also like right there watching with me so we were kind of growing up seeing that and I think that's kind of what motivated us to uh always want to do you that. naturally gravitate towards basketball or were you a late bloomer um, I definitely, I did gravitate towards basketball. I always had the little tykes hoops and then like yeah. an eight foot one, just like keep working my way up. But um, I think I was more heavy baseball too. Like I was half and half instead of all basketball until I like broke my wrist in baseball season in like fourth grade. And then after that, I was just like, I couldn't play the year. So I was like basketball. That's kind of when it started to take over. So what do you guys got? What do you guys got for a feeder program down there? I know it's a little bit different in different towns, but what, 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 do, what do they do down in that area uh, before you get to high school to kind of get you guys ready? Yeah, well, we have we have a little like little travel programs, and like we usually play in like the YMCA leagues. Like we'll play the Ellsworths, Hamden, Brewer, but, like we'll play NBI, all those ones. So they have travel, and then we have our middle school teams play like the other smaller schools around us. So that's you don't really get much from that, but the travel teams weren't bad because we play all the class B and A schools around here, kind of, so. And you mentioned uh, all those different schools that are, are down there in uh, down east, right? So down east basketball, how would you describe it? Because I feel like different parts of the state, different types of basketball. So w- what's down east basketball all about? Um, I don't, geez, I don't know. Hard, hard work, probably, because there's a lot of, a lot of tough guys down here, a lot of lobster fishermen, <laughs> <laughs> stuff like that. So I'll probably just toughness. It's, you don't always get the most talent out of here, but no one's going to back down. And it's just a good hoop scene, though, right? You mentioned, like, some of those schools, but just everyone loves basketball down there, right? It's just a really yeah. good basketball yeah, area. Exactly. And it's just everyone, yeah. The communities are great for basketball. All the, like, gyms around those areas are pretty packed. Everyone loves it, so. Bunch of small communities down there on the coast, right? You mentioned Lobster and stuff like that. I'm guessing you guys are all ultra competitive when it comes to, like, surrounding towns. So Blue Hill and that, that George Stevens Academy community, like, who do you guys – like look at as like huge rivals like what what, what are the surrounding towns do you guys look at uh, with a chip on your um shoulder? i guess like ellsworth and mdi because they were always b and yeah and then those are the closest one they were always b and they always kind of thought that they could like beat up on us but they couldn't <laughs> and bucksport too cause they were in our class and bucksport was a close town so i'd probably say those three like for regular season would be even though MDI didn't play after my freshman year, they didn't want it because we were supposed to play Ellsworth MDI every other year <laughs> and they stopped calling junior and senior year. So we just played Ellsworth three years in a row. It's prob- probably better they did, right? Probably better that they didn't call because uh, it might have I mean, been an L oh, for them. But yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I like, I like a lot of those guys. I'm surprised they didn't, honestly. They won, they won states my junior year. So those would have been great games. That was the year we were supposed to play them. But. You mentioned you mentioned traveling when you were younger, like uh, with some of those surrounding towns and stuff like that. Did you get into AAU at all prior to high school, or you know? Yeah, what? I think I started playing Black Bear North 
in like third or fourth grade, honestly. Yeah. Pretty young. And then I moved to Maine Thunder with like middle stat, Bryce Harmon, Mason Cooper, McDevitt, a couple and Bagshaw, a couple of those guys for like one or two years. And then I went back in high school. So, so you had a, you, you kind of knew other kids around the state, even yeah. before you got to high school, you kind of knew who, who were some of the other good kids in your class and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. We always played against like Tehran and Griffin and the, and those teams back in, in like seventh, eighth grade. So yeah. Good battles or what? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, honestly, I don't even remember everything, but we just used to play so much. They would beat us up. We would beat them. Like, yeah, definitely good battles. All right. Uh, so when you got to high school, I mean, I read the, uh, I was reading the bio on, on the website, on the UMA website and crazy overall win loss record. What was it? Only two, only two losses over the course of four years, three state championships. So obviously had a, had a pretty good, okay career at George Stevens, but coming into it at the very beginning, like, what were you thinking? Because, I mean, I'm, you know, we all say, oh, I want to get to high school and win state championships, but you probably weren't thinking it was going to play out the way it did, to be honest, right? Um, I mean, I have a <laughs> – you'd be surprised. I have a letter from my freshman year we had to do in a class that I wrote to myself, and, like, one of the goals was to win four. So I had a feeling that, like, we could, but, I mean, obviously we didn't do that. But, I mean, yeah, I, I – we we had a group of guys like our team. We had a group of guys we played together for so long, and I think from a young age we kind of knew that we had like a good chance. So like, and that was our goal like since kids. So yeah. So for obvious, obviously freshman year didn't didn't work out for you. You set up yeah. to go to win four state championships, and you go over one over one right yeah. off the bat. But uh, what do you remember most from that freshman year? Uh, freshman year was fun. We started out zero and three. And then we, I think we won like 15 in a row and then Orno beat us in the first round. But uh, like that, the class was pretty loaded that year, honestly, like Callis, I think won that year, they were one, we were two. And then you had like Kyle Bouchard and Holden was three. And then like Gage Feeney was still a WA and they were there and Lee was still good. So that, that year was pretty good, but yeah, we, uh, we made a, um, a long stretch in the, in the regular season, but once it came to playoffs, Orno, Orno got us. And I remember that one sat with me for a long time. How far, how far did you guys get in the playoffs your freshman year? That was the f- first round. Oh, seven. first round. Yeah. Oh, so out in the first yeah. round as a freshman. Yep, yep. Yeah, so that one sat with me for a long time. Yeah. So coming back, you know, obviously you were you were goal-driven and stuff like that. You wanted to win state championships. Yeah. How hard were you actually working back then, like in the offseason? Like how hard were you attacking your off-seasons to get better? Uh, was it more so just – you said just, just played year-round or were you actually in the gym, like getting better? I was – like I was, but not like – I didn't know what I – like I, I was just shooting, you know, and like working – it wasn't it wasn't like I would be now, like when I was a freshman and sophomore. But um, it was, yeah, it was just playing all year round is really what helped the most, I think, when I was younger. And then, like, I was in the gym and stuff, but it wasn't it wasn't as serious. Like, I, I wish I could say I would have been a lot better <laughs> if I knew what I knew now. But yeah. But, so yeah. for anyone who's seen you play, I remember the first time I saw you play, you guys were playing for Kent in a tournament game. And I remember hearing the name, like, because I, I didn't I know the coach. He's like, yeah, we got to watch out for this Taylor kid. I'm like, OK, so I get there. I had no idea what to expect. And you started coming down like pulling up from like thirty feet and stuff like that, and I was like, "Who the fuck? What, what, what is going on right now?" Right? Yeah. So, where, where did the style of play come from? Like, were you always a shooter? Were you a shooter as a kid? Like, did you always have range, or did you kind of just evolve into the player you became? I mean, yeah, I guess, yeah. Like, I've always been a, a shooter. I guess I, it wasn't really like that until I don't even know seventh or eighth grade. I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with me. I take terrible shots, but I just. Have to <laughs> I guess I don't know I just started watching too much NBA but I mean I just like I just remember as especially at that age like I just was always so confident like and that's I guess that's just how it came of just taking shots and working on it and watching other people doing it and seeing them being able to do it so it kind of just led to that but yeah so <laughs> some of the shots like you said 30 feet like phone number 30 feet is like you shouldn't be taking that but and the other thing too that I was impressed with too is like you never like you never like really sped up. You always played at your own speed, your own pace, which is something that usually takes a while for people to figure out. So, was that a growing process too? Like just learning to to play at your speed and letting others kind of, like, kind of adapt to you versus adapting to what they're giving you. Like where where did that all come from? That just that overall control and feel for the game. I think so. That definitely came from AAU because like AAU obviously is so much faster than like main travel basketball like middle school. So. I think 
struggling in AAU and then having to learn the pace and be able to play at that level. And then obviously when you come back, it comes down a little bit. I think, I think that helped a lot. And I could just learn that once I learned to control the place pace at AAU level, it became a lot simpler, like in that level. So. At what point did uh, you just become so confident that whenever you pull like a 30 footer and the coach was like, Hey, 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 come on, let's pass the ball. At what point did you just learn to ignore that and just keep pulling from 30 feet? Mm. Well, in high school, probably my, my, the end of sophomore year. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, probably too soon, but. <laughs> <laughs> so sophomore year, you guys got all the way to States. What do you remember marching through the actual tournament? Because it's one thing to get to the tournament. It's another thing to actually march through it, play multiple games and just the pressure that continues to build and build. So what do you remember most from that, that first state championship run and just marching through the tournament? Um, I, well, actually the, the Northern Maine game against Bucksport was, it was really good. They got up 10 0, I think, 12 0. Like, in the first, we didn't score for like six and a half minutes in the first quarter. And I just remember that, that because the first two, I think the first two, we played Skank in the second round and that, that they had Justin Thompson, so they were pretty good. Yeah. But the first two um, weren't, weren't as tough. And then Bucksport was the first team in a while that like kind of punched us in the mouth. So I think that beginning of that like helped us build the, build the run like you know what I'm saying like it helped it, it helped us learn how to face adversity and stuff but I think the Bucksport game stood out to me the most because like I just remember looking at my teammates faces and everyone's freaking out and stuff <laughs> we're like we haven't scored in seven minutes and that's never happened to us and then we found a way and it was ugly and low scoring but we battled back and I think that kind of helped us for the next three years like we knew what we knew even if we were down like we were good enough to come back and stuff like that who'd you guys play for the state championship sophomore year Wayne Fleet. Wayne Fleet was a good game, too. They, they, they had some good guys. Was that down in Augusta or was that in Bangor? That was in Augusta, yeah. So what, was was, like, what was it like going on the road? Different environment? You know, it's a different mm-hmm. field. Definitely, definitely a different field compared to the uh, insurance center in Bangor. So, yeah. Was it like playing down there in Augusta for a state championship? No, I was nervous. I, I was definitely nervous. Honestly, it's funny because I, I always remember we were kind of – we were losing – and like I was still nervous and like playing kind of soft. And then uh, one of the, it was like the second quarter, and one of the kids was like to his teammates, and I heard him. He's like, "Oh man, this kid's not that good." <laughs> and I was like, and at that point, I was like, "Yeah, he's kind of right right now." And that that was kind of like what set me off. And we ended up, you know, doing what we did. But yeah, Augusta was Augusta's court is a lot different from the cross center. The old bright like stands and then it, the cross center is like dark and all it's new and stuff so it's definitely a different field but i like playing there honestly we played there a few times in some uh like a warm-up practice or f- before that so yeah we got used to it how does george Stevens celebrate state championships what, what, what was the state championship celebration like once you guys brought the gold ball back home um we do we have like a little mini parade around blue hill they do the fire trucks and stuff for, i think a lot of towns do that so that was always fun we got in the bus and then just, yeah, the fire escort around town for 20 minutes. And then everyone goes back to school, do a little lunch. and That's it? Yeah. That's it, huh? I thought like that would be more than that. I mean, oh, actually, we do. We went to the state. I think most teams that win states go to the state house, too. Yeah. So we did that. But, yeah, just just a parades. Nothing, you know. Nothing too crazy. Yeah, nothing too crazy. Not like Tom on the, the boat parade. <laughs> <laughs> So clearly you, you had ambitions and goals of playing beyond uh, high school, playing in college and playing at a high level. At what point did schools come looking? I mean, you, probably, you played AAU, so you probably got some exposure there, but mm-hmm. at what point were schools was giving you looks and were you starting to like really weigh what you wanted to do, where you're going to go, stuff like that? I mean, it, t- it took a while, honestly. I mean, you you know, like for a lot of main kids, it, it, it takes extra for them, for coaches to kind of, believe in it but so yeah it took a while and then in junior and senior year like I was getting I was talking to like a ton of d3 schools and some d2 schools and I I never got an offer honestly so that's why I went and played prep but yeah so I think like junior senior year is when it it started to pick up and then I never really just found something like the place I wanted to be at so I figured I would go prep because I kind of knew I always wanted to come back here yeah at the same time but yeah, junior senior year is when it kind of started to pick up, I guess. What kind of streak did you guys go on? Because I know you, you only lost a handful of games in high school. So win a state championship sophomore year. Mm-hmm. Did you just win a ton of games junior and senior year? Yeah, I think, well, junior year we were 22-0. and 0, So 
well, we won six or seven games before that. So it was like 20, I think 30 maybe was like our, our longest. Cause then my senior year, we lost our first game of the year, but. Who, who'd you guys lose to uh senior year? Lee at Lee. Oh, they shit. smacked us. Actually, we lost by like 18. <laughs> it was that hangover. It was that two straight state championships and you go into Lee. So. Yeah, I guess so. And that's gotta but, be a pretty shitty bus ride too from Blue Hill up to Lee. Gosh, yeah, it is. Especially after that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. but you, you mentioned some of these schools, but you guys play a, a good schedule, right? So, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of talented class C schools and I'm guessing you played most of them during the regular season, right? So it wasn't like it was a cakewalk. It wasn't like you guys were just playing bummy teams. You guys were playing some good teams. Yeah. We we're playing some all right teams. I, I wish like they changed the classes up in my sophomore year. So a lot of the, like Holton's and some other like schools around the edge moved up and we didn't get to play them until my senior year. But yeah, I mean, we definitely, there were some good teams for sure. So clearly people know who you were, especially come around junior year, senior year, they know they know the name. So whenever you're on the road, you're probably getting it from some of these student sections and stuff like that. Like, oh, yeah. Who were some of the uh, the more rowdy uh, student sections? Did they ever cross the line or was it all in good fun? No, it didn't cross the line. It was, it was, it was all fine. But I think um, Ellsworth, Ellsworth was always good. They were big. And because like Bryce and I were friends too, and everyone kind of knew that. So like they, they would give it to me a little extra because it's like, they knew me too. So Ellsworth was always good. Um, Bucksport was, like, was usually pretty good. Um, I'm trying to think. Even Actually, honestly, we went to Callis one time. The Callis one was – the Callis one was, was taunting. Like, they were they were <laughs> saying some good stuff. So I was like, all right, like, you know, you know, those were good ones. You get more excited for big road games or big home games? Road. Yeah. Yeah. I like being the bad guy. <laughs> okay. Um, so marching back to a state championship game your junior year. Um, any, did you feel any added pressure, like going back to back, like, or was, were you just more comfortable at that point? having won it the year before, uh, what, what was it like going for that second one? Uh, the second one definitely was, I think the most pressure. Cause like the, by the third one, we had, we had done the back to back. So like we didn't have to do that, but yeah, the back to back was probably the most pressure. Plus Winthrop was a really good team. And so we knew that was going to be a good game. And um, yeah, we're undefeated, we, right? I mean, you were undefeated all the way up to, to the state championship game. So yeah, I mean, I think both of us were 21. Oh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. But and yeah, we were down by nine in the third quarter and Max fouled out. And like, so yeah, it was it was a real it was a really close game, really, really tough game. And obviously, uh, Jared Chase hit that shot, the game winner. So saved us there. But yeah, no, <laughs> Winthrop was a good team. And I think that was definitely the most. Maybe I don't know, like nervous, but at the beginning, nervous. Yeah, I guess I would say nervous before because it was a big deal to try to back it up. Was the uh, was the celebration any different the second time around, or was it uh, le- less fun? Like same no, thing. I, same, same it was, it was more or? fun. No, it was more fun because I mean, I, we also felt great. Jared was a senior, obviously he'd been there for a lot, so and him being able to hit a shot like that, it was it was definitely more fun getting getting back to back, and we knew that winter was a better team than Wayne Fleet probably. And we're, and we're just re- really good. So that yeah, was more fun. So coming back for your senior, you, you mentioned losing your, your first game. So you don't have to worry about going undefeated at that point, right? That's out the way. So it's not that much pressure to deal with, but going for three straight, everyone's gunning for you guys. Mm-hmm. Um, there may be, you know, maybe taking some the foot off the gas a little bit just because you guys haven't really been challenged in a while. What did mm-hmm. you do to stay motivated that senior year, like collectively and individually? Cause I mean, Winning two straight state championships is impressive. Going for a third's got to be a little daunting and just a little bit tiring too, I would think. So, how'd you guys stay motivated throughout that? I mean, honestly, think it was a good thing that Lee beat us probably because that was like a, a wake up call that kind of like made us remember that we weren't untouchable or you know that we could lose on any on any given night. So, I think that was big, just remembering that we're not way above everyone else. So, we got to stay humble and keep working, but. I think by the third, it was de- like the least nervous because I think we had so many of the same guys and we were just confident in each other. And like we we knew at the end of the day that most likely like we were good enough and had been through it enough, like it's enough experience that we knew we, were, we should we should get it done. So I think that kind of kept us going. And then I got to ask you about the 60 point game, 60 or 62? 61, actually. 61. OK. And who, who was it against? Lee. <laughs> oh, it was against Lee. So was it senior year or was it junior year? Junior year. 
Oh, okay. I was going to say that would have been a nice way to respond back to him senior year. But all right. So talk to me about the 61-point game. They me, actually, with a, with a win. <laughs> so talk to me about the 61-point game. That's, what, that's 15 points a quarter, which doesn't sound too crazy. But, I mean, it is. It's, it's a lot of points. So mm -hmm. at what point did you know you had it going? Well, I had 27 in the first. So that's that was the that was the best quarter. It was obviously all down from there. But, I mean – I think they started out in a two, three zone. So I got a couple of easy, just spot up threes. And like, usually the first three don't go You get like one for three, two for three, but I hit the first few. And I think, yeah, I mean, I had, I think I had seven threes in the first quarter. The first quarter was bonkers. So yeah, that's like, by that time I was like, I had a feeling that I could probably do what, I don't know. At that point I was thinking like 40 or 50, I didn't. <laughs> but yeah. I think the, the first quarter was was the best one for sure. Yeah, so how much did you have at halftime? Do you remember how much you had at halftime? Yeah, so I picked up – I had 36. I picked up my second foul and sat the last – he took me out the last four minutes of the – four and a half minutes of the second quarter. Four and, and, and a half minutes of the second quarter you came out? I played 26 and a half, I think, total that game because I came out the last couple minutes of the game too. So, and what, yeah. What, at what nah. point were people just feeding you? Because, I mean, at some point, your teammates got to be like, all right, yeah, like let's just give it to them. Let's just keep giving it to them. Like, at what point were they just like, if you pass them, they just like give it right back to you? At what point I think was that happening? By the, by the third, because, like, I didn't really know after half because I sat, too. So I was like, I didn't really know after halftime if I was going to, like, really keep it going. And then I think I, I must have just hit my first few shots on the, in the uh, third and got to, like, 42 or 43 like kind of early. And then I was, and then at that point they were like, yeah, let's, they just kind of every time they wanted to just see if I would like keep making it or whatever. But yeah, I mean, that was crazy. <laughs> I've never, the net was like this, <laughs> this wide. Were you aware of like, of any, like what the school record was or anything like that? Or were you just, just going for it? Just, just, um, I think once I got to like high forties, it was Matt, the assistant coach and yeah. he had like 52. And because they took me or I don't know, they took me out at one point and he was messing. He's like, I'm not putting you back in. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think he had like 52 or 53 before that. So. All right. So 61 points. How many bad shots did you throw? up? Probably quite a few. <laughs> if I had to guess, if I had to guess. <laughs> well, and did, was there any like that? Would, did you throw up any ridiculous shots like 35 feet just come down? No, honestly, no, actually, I wasn't surprisingly. I was pretty locked, locked in. I know. Yeah. I think I was like. 12 for 20 or 12 for 21. I'm sorry. I no half court pulls or any, no lamello half court pulls or anything like that, but <laughs> nothing too crazy. You get anything from that game to keep as a, as a memory? Like do you get the ball or anything like that? Do I have? No, I didn't. No, not the nothing, ball. Huh? Uh, some, they, they gave me like a little, they ended up doing a little, gave me a little plaque or something, but no, I didn't keep the ball. That's crazy. <laughs> Is that game out there? Is that on YouTube somewhere? Mm-hmm. Okay, might have to do something with that. Might have to do something <laughs> with that afterwards. All right. Uh, so 61 point game, two state championships going for a third. The march to a three P. Any challenges or was it pretty smooth sailing for you guys all the way through? Um, the playoffs, the play the our senior year, the playoffs I were the hardest one because Holton somehow was the eight seed. So that was our quarterfinal game. And yeah. Holton was good my uh, senior year. So that was a that was a good game. That was the best quarterfinal game besides my freshman year, obviously, that we had had. And then I'm trying to think when we got to states, like Holiday was pretty good too. And so, but I mean, it's not like it was a cakewalk, but I, it's it's looking back like I just we knew like we kind of just knew like that the only team that could beat us was us. Like it had if we didn't perform or if we got too comfortable, something like that. Any of the three mean more special than the other, or are they all they all pretty sweet. They all, they come they come as a three P, right? They, they come as, as a trio. Yeah, I don't know actually. Every uh, when people ask, uh, I just the yeah, it comes as a trio. It's just, and if it was two, then I would be just as happy with those two. But yeah, I think I can't really. I don't know. I don't think one's more special than the other. Is it more fun to win in Bangor or down in Augusta? Because Augusta kind of be like a road game. Yeah, I. Mm, Bangor. Bangor is nice. I like Bangor a lot. Usually more people from our area come also. So got a ton, ton of wins in Bangor, ton of wins in Bangor. Mm. Uh, you mentioned you went the prep route. So mm. at that point, was it more so you just 
we're shooting for, I want to go play at a higher level. You know, I'm getting some D3 looks, but I want think I can do better. Or was it, you just wanted some more time to kind of work on yourself, on your body and your game. What, what was the thought process with going prep for a year? It was definitely a little bit of both. Cause I, I definitely wanted to try to get a, a offer somewhere or like, see if I could just play at a higher level. Cause that was always my goal. Um, but I think, and yeah, definitely knowing that I, my body definitely wasn't, which it still isn't, but definitely need to work <laughs> on my body and work on my game and stuff and um, try out some different competitions, see if see if that would help. But, yeah, that was kind of the thought process behind that. And then wound up back here at Maine, so mm-hmm. playing for, for Coach Barron, who mm-hmm. I think you've just taken over. He might have been there for a year before you got there, right? So mm-hmm. Yeah, one year. What's, what's it like playing for Coach Barron, and, and what kind of program was he building up? Obviously, we know what he did with the girls' program, and I was trying to do it with the boys' program. Uh, what can you say for just the, the, the culture of the program, where the program's going? What was it about? Was it just you wanted to come home or was it something about Maine that you wanted to come play at Maine? I mean, well, I didn't really know what the culture was about, from, but I, de- I did want to come home. But I, like, I'm glad I chose here because, uh, like, I mean, Baron is – he's a great coach, smart, one of the smartest basketball minds, like a little bit too smart for us sometimes. But, <laughs> <laughs> no, but he's smart. And – um obviously seeing like what he did with the women's program and how they are now, like knowing that he can do that with us. And uh, it's really up to us, like buying in and stuff like that. And uh, he's trying to build a tougher culture. Obviously it's been rough for as many years as I can remember a long time, but so he's trying to turn that around and have like kind of toughness and integrity be at the center of that. And, I mean, we're getting there. It's obviously a long journey. And then this season is just a mess, so it doesn't help either. But I, I definitely think we're going in the right direction, and I'm, I'm excited for the next couple of years for sure. So we mentioned about how you played so many games in the insurance center in high school, right, in a, in a packed gym. Then you come to Maine and you play in an empty gym at the Cross Insurance Center. Because like you said, the program's getting there. You guys are building up, and you guys are trying to work towards – uh, a higher level of, of excellence, which I'm, I'm positive it'll get it'll get there. But what's that like going from playing in a packed house, you know, chasing state championships in a packed cross insurance center to maybe like 500 to a thousand people in, in the stands for home games? So, like, well, what's that like? It's definitely different, and it definitely makes like it makes me hungry to make us better because like you yeah. want people there, you want and you want it loud and stuff like that. So it's definitely a motivator for sure because. I mean, no one wants, like, everyone wants people in the games. And then now this year, every, obviously, everything's empty. So it's kind of the same. But, um, yeah, it was definitely different than uh, than what high school is like, for sure. What's been the biggest area of growth from you from your freshman year to, to sophomore year? Because I mean, you've gotten some starts this year, right? So getting more minutes in the rotation. What's been the biggest area of growth uh, that's uh, contributed to that for you? Just letting the ego go, not having to be the guy, and – yeah, I mean, and just buying into the program, like, and and having fun with it, because I know, like, last year, I, like, I knew it was, I knew I wasn't gonna play, and that it was gonna be difficult, but still, when it happens for the first time, like, damn, this sucks. Like, so, um, I think last year was definitely a challenge, and having to grow through that, and then realizing that thinking about the team first, and like my teammates and brothers, like, actually benefits me too, like, and I just started trying to trying to think that way more, and. uh doing what I can to help. And then it did obviously work out and I got to have a couple starts. So, yeah. So what, what kind of advice would you give to kids right now that that may be in a similar situation where they're not getting minutes at the edge of the bench? Uh, you know, you went from being the man and putting up 61 points at three straight mm-hmm. championships, having to kind of start over and earn a role. Like mm-hmm. what, what advice would you give to someone kind of in a, in a similar circumstance where they don't know if they're ever going to get in there or they're not going to, they're not going to make it. You know, what, 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 what advice would you give them? Well, the first thing is it's it's not going to come if you're not like putting in the work. Obviously, like you got to be doing that. And the second thing is is like you got to be able to figure out like how to put other people first and realize that somehow that comes back to you and actually helps you, like you know, and just putting the team first. But um, just don't and don't get down on yourself because I mean, obviously it's tough. Like everyone wants to be playing the whole time, forty minutes scoring the points, but. It's at the end of the day, there's only a couple guys that can do that, really. So you have to realize that. And then, yeah, just sticking with it and keep putting in work and uh, keeping your head down and just doing what you can to help the team. And then it'll come back to you. 
How do you feel about moving forward here with this team? Because obviously there's been some bright spots uh, in terms of players coming in and stuff like that. So uh, what can you say about the men's program and what we, what we can expect? Because you're going to have, what, at least two more years of eligibility, maybe a third. Are you, you going to get I an extra? Have, I will have three. Yeah, I got three. Yeah, I'm, not, so, I'm not exactly sure. I've been, I'm going to be like 25 at that point. <laughs> um, I'm not sure about that. But no, I definitely, I'm excited. Um, and we're getting some more, like, there's obviously more main talent. Like you made a post about it. There's four of us. So that's nice too. And um, I, I think it is headed in the right direction. It's just, it's going to take work though. Sometimes we get a little complacent and we think that since we're saying it's going to do that, yeah, it's going to happen. But the more uh, we figure out this starts with us and just grinding and putting in the work, I think it can change because we have the right staff and uh, people around us to do it. So and talk to me about the America East Conference. Yeah, what's it like? Because, like too. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, it, it's it's obviously it's not a Power Five conference, but it's it's competitive, right? So I mean, you got some very good teams at the top, and it's kind of good throughout. What's it like this grind of uh, of of college basketball conference play? What, what can you say about the America East? Um, it's it's a it's, it is a good conference. There, yeah, like you said, like there's the top few teams are really good, and then a lot of those guys ends up transferring going other places but I think it's just like a really high level AAU almost so it's like we do that's why I think that we have room like obviously like there's room to for us to grow and, and win games but um no the conference play is tough especially when you go back with this year we we're going back to back um every weekend but yeah, conference play is it, tough, but it's fun because, like, obviously those games mean way more. And when you're going other places, their crowds are usually bigger, too. So it's just, like, it's fun. And then knowing that you always have a chance to make it to the tournament if you just get out of your conference, that makes it that makes it fun, too. Playing back-to-backs and poor conditioning because you guys can't practice for weeks at a time. Like, it's, it's got to be tough. Like, those actual games you guys get in, like – it's got to be a grind, I'm guessing. Yeah, I mean, I think we had one game against NJIT. I played like 37 minutes, and I have not played 37 minutes in a long, long time. <laughs> and we were out of shape. So it was like – so, yeah, that was that was definitely um, – that was tough. But, yeah, you just got to stick with it. It's like AU. I mean, we used to play, what, like seven games in two days. So if we could do that back then. We gotta stick with it. Fast it gets fast. it gets harder. I'm telling you, like once you get to be like you mentioned, like being 25 and still playing and stuff like that. But I'm telling you, like once you get out of college and you start playing like in these men's league tournaments where it's yeah. like four games in two days, you're gonna be hurting so bad. It yeah. only gets worse. It only gets worse. Yeah. You know. Well, I remember Noonan. I was like, I did Noonan a couple of years ago. I was like, damn, like yeah. After the weekend, I I was feeling it. Yeah. Uh, you got a bunch of international kids on your team. What's it like having uh, international students? Uh, just different vibes, different backgrounds, um, just being exposed to that. Because, I mean, obviously in Maine where it's a very similar, like, kind of culture. Um, mm -hmm. But you get to college and you get these international kids. So what, what have you learned from your teammates, uh, some of these international kids? Honestly, I, I love it. In Florida, I had a lot of international teammates too. And just um, being with them and interacting and learning from them and, like, picking up on the lingo – just being around it, like it's it's fun because you learn, you just get stuff from so many. I mean, we have like eight different countries on our team, so you just get to kind of pull from all of that and like make those connections. But no, it's definitely fun, and um, yeah, just like hearing them interact sometimes. Like if they're from the same country too, and they start going really fast, like it's it's funny. But. <laughs> So you're at you're in a position right now where a lot of main kids want to be. They want to go play D one. They want to play at the highest level. So. Mm -hmm advice time what, what advice would you give these kids because you took a certain route to get there but you wound up getting there and, and hard work's paying off because now you're in the rotation and getting minutes and it's probably only going to increase from here so for those kids that want to chase that dream they want to play division one basketball like what, what advice would you give to them being from Maine, being from a small town what would you tell them just don't get dis like discouraged because especially since we're from maine our paths probably will be harder and so whatever, like whatever route you take, you know, just like be happy with it and stay to the grind and stick to it and just try to stay positive with yourself. Because I mean, like with me, I, I almost I quit prep school and came here and just started taking classes and like tried out. So it's like any all the routes are different to getting there. So you just got to stick with it and believe in yourself and, and keep putting in the work. Really, that's what it comes down to. 
Are you still plugged in with the high school scene right now? Like, do you know who some of these kids are coming up? Like, if you, you get to play with any of these kids, like in the summertime and stuff like that? Well, not last this past summer, obviously, because we were in the middle of COVID. But I mean, following your the Instagram page really keeps me caught up with uh, with who's still playing. And I know that, like, and I know that uh, Cash is probably the one I follow the most right now. Kind Kid of is mind. nice. Kid is super nice. Super yeah. nice. Yeah, he is. All of a sudden he's, he's got bounce now. He's dunking yeah, up. It, yeah, yeah. Except he's bouncy. That doesn't remind me of me. <laughs> yeah, except he's bouncy. So I'm gonna get you out of here in a couple of easy ones. Um, okay. You mentioned playing with a couple of different AAU programs and a bunch of kids from all over the state. If you had to build your five, and you're included from your time. But what's what's your squad going to be of, of kids from Maine that you went went through it with? Who are you going to pick? My grade or just kind of a couple just years? Whoever, whoever was around at the time. All right. Well, I'm going to start with Tehran and I won two because that we had that backcourt multiple times and that was that was pretty deadly. Um, let's see. I don't know. There's a lot of good guys that we played with. I probably put, I honestly probably put Matt Fleming in there at the three. Um, maybe Theo, Nick. Nick is good for one of the bigs. Um, no, oh, what was that kid's name? Nolan. There's a kid named Nolan. I think he went Cape Elizabeth when, around my time. He was good. I would say actually, I'll go, I'll go Nick, Theo, and um, I need another big. Well, it's, help me out here. I got. I'm thinking like you, Jake Godfrey. This is your squad. I'm not, I'm not giving you. I, I want you to hurt feelings. I want people to hit yeah. you up afterwards. Like, come on, man. No. Um, I'll go. I'll put Jake Godfrey in there too. Okay. For another bit. Or actually, wait. No, hold on. Hold on. That's disrespect. I'm gonna go Max because he was on my team. <laughs> go Sorry, Jake. Uh, I, I I wonder this question all the time yeah, with you on a main and stuff like that. Like I'm sure you you know you're in your shoes and fashion and stuff like that. What's it like rocking New Balance? Are you okay with Maine being sponsored by New Balance or is it tough? I mean, this I like this sweatshirt. It's not bad. I mean, it, it's 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 not like actually I don't even I might get in trouble. It's not bad. <laughs> um, I don't mind it. Honestly, the shoes are the Kawhis are really comfy. So I mean, you get made fun of on the court every once in a while if you start talking trash and like you're wearing New Balances, bro. <laughs> it's it like oh, my bad. But um, no, it's not bad. The gear's comfy and it, and it looks fine. So and it's free, right? Free gear. And it's free gear. Yeah, free gear. You can't complain about free gear. Yeah. So you had 61 versus Lee. If you could have had 61 versus anybody, like if, if let's say you, know, you could have picked the game to go off like that, who would you have gone against and dropped those 61 on? And tell me who, and it maybe it could be like a primary defender. Like who would you have loved to have scored 61 on? <laughs> you are trying to get me to call people over. Right yeah. oh. uh, I don't know. I would have liked to, honestly, like I would have loved to save it for uh, the Winthrop State game. Yeah, I always want like I always after that game I always wanted to try to get like fifty at the cross or something. But yeah, if, if one of the state game at the cross against Winthrop since we were both undefeated, that would have been the one. I thought, were, gonna, I thought you were going to say your coach. Oh yeah, <laughs> no, no, no. I let him. He can have his. Okay. Uh, before we get up out of here, I always give my guests the chance to say the last words. Anything we didn't touch on? Anything you want to say before we get up out of here for the people out there? Um, actually, I want to say that I think what you're doing is awesome too. The uh, the big time hoop site, um, especially in Maine, like there's not a lot of stuff like that really at all. And you're getting the scores out, the pictures out, videos out of people. That's I think that's awesome, and it's definitely helping a lot of kids get exposure. And uh, yeah, so keep doing what you're doing. And thanks for having me on. I've been I've been wanting to come on for a little while. So yeah, no, I've been, I've been busy. I've been like these scores. Let me tell you that these scores, these scores yeah, take me yeah. like an hour at least every morning. Yeah. And now we're doing videos and stuff like that. So yeah. podcast yeah. might go on hold for a little That's bit. Awesome. Fun, but yeah, but the the videos, people are getting a lot of a lot of kicks out of. So I'm gonna try to keep that going. And like I said, there might be something with the 61 point game. If I can find the video, maybe something yeah. coming out with the 61 point game. Right. Uh, real quick for the folks out there that uh, follow the U Main program, what, what what can we expect? Like, just I know it's kind of up in the air, but if you had to kind of guess where things are going for the rest of the year, what would you say? Where can people watch all, all these things? Well, I mean, hopefully, if we can get back into conference play the next couple of weeks, then all of those games are streamed right on ESPN Plus. And um, we might be out of shape when we get back, but we're going to be hungry because like, <laughs> we've only played eight games. 
And so, and I know a lot of us are itching to play. It's, it's been too long. So hopefully in the next week or so, we'll, we'll find something out, but until then, sure. Yeah. And ESPN plus for those that don't have it, that, that is, that is a good purchase right there. Like that is, that is a good thing to have. Nice five uh, bucks a month. So. Oh yeah. I, I've been able to catch everyone, everyone from Maine who's doing like playing D1 basketball. Like, yeah, catch all games. yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Taylor for coming through on Big Time Hoops, the podcast. Appreciate it. And, uh, that's going to do it for another, another episode here. Make sure you're checking out all the previous episodes uh, wherever you get your podcast. Do me a favor. Scroll on down to the bottom. Go ahead and rate the podcast. Give me five stars. Let's try to get those ratings up. And uh, we'll be back next week with another Big Time episode of Big Time Hoops, the podcast. We'll see you.